antlion larvae evolved to be little ooh, oh, evil structural engineers. Let me explain. Antlions are winged insects, but their larvae look like uh, little hot pockets with big jaws on them. <laughs> kind of like that. And what they do to hunt, they hunt in a very fascinating way. They dig a hole into the ground, into the sand, and they and they burrow into it and they fling sand out from the hole. So what you get kind of looks like a sarlacc pit. And what the larvae then do is sit at the bottom of that sarlacc pit and they wait for other insects to uh, come near it and then fall down into their venomous jaws. I say they are like structural engineers because the antlion larvae take advantage of what's called the angle of repose of sand. And the angle of repose is the angle at which some granular medium like sand will naturally rest. If you took a bunch of sand in a cup and you poured it out into a pile, it would form a natural angle. That angle that it wants to sit at is the angle of repose. Any higher, if you raise the angle up, it will collapse, the slope will fail. So what antlion larvae do is they fling out sand from their little sarlacc pits until the sand around their hole is at the angle of repose so that any insect walking around or walking through this pit will cause the slope to fail and then the insect will therefore fall down into the antlion's jaws. I guess you should say that antlion larvae should join the army corps of ant engineers. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all your comments, questions, and corrections and address them with the charisma of a guy at the party who just has to bring up the fact that wombat poop is cube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, school teacher. Fascinating. That reminds me, did you know that wombats poop cubes? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You need to get more drink over there for the rest of the night? I understand. It's because they're intestine at the end. It really compresses the... Okay, no, I'll tell you later. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this channel. Hint, ones and zeros. Or zeros and ones. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we were trying to fight and defeat Wolverine with science. I said that with a little bit of knowledge as to how Wolverine's powers actually work and some and some clever, ooh, super villainy to get around said powers, we could defeat Logan with the correct application of vacuum, acceleration, and electromagnetism. But what did you have to say? Our first comment comes from James Neve, who says, a cigar made out of antimatter <laughs> would do this. <laughs> That's the impact crater in Arizona. Woo, and it's substantial. If you assume the mass of a cigar like I did, just back of the envelope, you get an explosion that's something like that. Hmm, that would probably go a pretty long way towards doing it. <laughs> By doing it, I mean killing Wolverine. Huge Ding Dong says, here's a tough question. How do you defeat science? Well, I guess you elect people who don't understand or actively undermine science for monetary gain to positions of power for extended periods of time. That does it. Also, magic. WebFox100 says, hey Kyle, what is your favorite non-canon way that Wolverine has died? You know what? I'm going to interpret this the opposite way. My favorite way that Wolverine has died in the comics, I think that's what you mean, is when Kitty Pride, as you can see here, when Kitty Pride phases her hand into Wolverine's brain, and then she lets her arm get cut off by Wolverine and leaves her hand in his brain, and he basically is incapacitated completely. That's a badass. I mean, looking at a panel like this, if you were going to defeat Wolverine, maybe you should take an Ellen Page out of Kitty Pride's book. Yeah! Neo Spacinian Sushi Roll says, For the fun of it, Kyle should do an episode on Flat Earth and explain in many easy to understand ways how a Flat Earth is impossible. Sure, this kind of sounds like a layup, right? It would be probably pretty easy for me to do because the Earth is round, and it would probably get a lot of views, just practically speaking. Hey. We're a YouTube channel. But we have to remember that extreme views like this, like truly believing that the Earth is flat and trying to prove it, extreme views like this are extreme and extreme in the minority. Even though they get a lot of airtime, this is a very, very, very small amount of people who have an outsized influence because they're essentially screaming this at us in the modern echo chamber that is internet culture and they have an outsized presence. 
we feel like more people believe the Earth is flat than actually do. It almost becomes its own meme. I'm of the opinion that I am not gonna add to that uh, highly vocal and incorrect minority uh, with my own voice, I am going to proceed as planned. I, I do not think we should come down to their level, which is pretty flat to begin with. BP Davis says, here's a question for Kyle. With the complete covering of Wolverine's bones and adamantium, how do new red blood cells get out of his bone marrow and into his circulatory system? Well, I actually get this question a lot, and I don't think it's ever fully addressed in the canon. I might be wrong, but you can imagine that Wolverine's bones aren't completely encased in adamantium. It could be more like a micro adamantium mesh. Our bones are not solid all the way through. There's like a mesh of proteins and fibers inside that makes our bones very, very strong. So to have some kind of adamantium mesh on the outside kind of fits with what bones are doing already and it would allow I guess red blood cells to get out of the bones and into the circulatory system it doesn't have to be completely encased like a bone sarcophagus which is the name of my metal band but the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode I'm giving to Hero Me Dom who says how about making a giant rail gun and firing Wolverine as the bullet towards a concrete wall oh that's an extreme concussion Okay, I like this idea a lot because if we're already creating the dangerously conductive electrical unit, the DCEU, where all, where all heroes go to die, then all we have to do is lure a Wolverine into it. I don't know, maybe we put two cold brewskis on either rail and tell him he's got to crack one open with the boys. And then he goes to reach him with his claws like this. And then because of the Lorenz forces involved, he would be accelerated like a bullet straight down the rails into a concrete wall at, I don't know, let's say two kilometers per second. <laughs> I know that Wolverine is basically indestructible, but this would be an obscene amount of force placed on his body, and it would be some kind of concussion when he hit the brick wall, and it is a clever application of everything we were talking about in the episode. So, Hero, you are indeed a super nerd. Inside here. But of course, I'm not always right. Sometimes I go to revive a down teammate in Apex Legends and there's a guy right there and I get annihilated. It's so hard to just get kills in that game. What? So what did I get wrong last week? Our first correction comes from Shinjiji, who says, now for a much more simple idea, couldn't you just lure Wolverine to a junkyard and flip on one of those giant magnets? He would be attached to it and you just keep him there for like a week until he starves to death. I mean, I guess I agree. I like this idea for its simplicity. It's not very, oh, it's not very super villainy, uh, but I like it because it is so simple. It's the same thing. Uh, I like to think of how Superman can defeat someone just by grabbing your wrist and just holding you there un until you die. There's no way you can loosen his grip. You cannot get away from him. He's too fast, too strong. He would just hold you there and then you just wither away. Kind of evil. I guess that's what we're going for though. King Madness says, you do realize adamantium cut through cement like a machete through hot butter, right? Well, I said if you made a giant vacuum chamber surrounded by concrete, Wolverine wouldn't be able to get through and he would suffocate in there. What I mean, of course, it, look, King Madness, if we're going oh, true supervillain route, we're gonna make this thing right. We're not, I'm not just talking like a width of concrete wall that his claws would be able to pierce all the way through. I'm talking like five meters of concrete in a cylinder all the way around. We don't have to contain Wolverine in one of these evil schemes for all that long. It doesn't have to be indefinitely it just has to be long enough for him to succumb to our plans. Our next correction comes from frequent commenter Jose Mina, who says, love the show, but I think you can do something else with electromagnetism that would be far more sinister, magnetic refrigeration. Now, magnetic refrigeration is something I've never heard of until uh, Jose Mina pointed it out to me, which is why I'm pointing you out. And it's very interesting. So some metals and some alloys have a special property where if you put them inside a permanent magnetic field, they suddenly increase in temperature. And the physics of that is kind of complicated. It's, you know, monopoles and dipoles all lining up and doing and the important part is that it increases temperature now if you put something like a metal in a magnetic field and it heats up because of physics then you can run a heat sink around it maybe like a cooling fluid so you put a piece of metal 
inside a magnetic field. It heats up, you drain that heat away, you steal that heat away with some kind of heat sink, and then you turn off the magnetic field and let the, and let the metal go back to normal. Then you turn it on again, heat up the metal a little bit more, and then cool it down, steal some of that heat. In effect, you are stealing the internal heat of this piece of metal. And it's so effective, in some cases, scientists can get uh, pieces of metal test subjects down to just a thousandth of a degree above absolute zero. Indescribably cold. This effect, though, a magnetocaloric effect, only works with some metals and some alloys. We have no way of knowing if adamantium would be affected in the same way as these metals. So while it is an interesting idea, I do not know if we can apply it in this case because we have no idea the properties of adamantium, only that it can be liquid at one point and it's it, it, it's indestructible. Okay, a lot of people are saying this next thing, which is why I'm pointing it out, but that dude says, wouldn't giving Wolverine a concussion, which is one of our solutions to defeating him, wouldn't that be useless due to his insane regeneration factor? Wouldn't his brain just quickly regenerate? Okay, I'm addressing this real quick. I said concussions would work because they work in the canon. Not only do they work in the movies, like in X2 when he's hit with a bullet in the head, ostensibly getting a concussion and then is out for a couple of seconds, half a minute, a minute or more, something like that. It also works in the comics. If you go to World War Hulk, you can see the Hulk actually saying what we say. I cannot get through your adamantium skull, but let's see what happens if I make your brain ricochet around your adamantium skull a lot. And what happens? Wolverine passes out and is more or less incapacitated. So, concussions work. Lord of the Keyboard has a long correction saying basically at the bottom, why don't we be even more simplistic and just have a giant magnetic field inside a room so high that when he moved around, it would induce a current in his bones and he wouldn't be able to move and he would just starve there or else his flesh would start to boil. Yeah, I suppose this is another way to get at what we're going for and I like this correction in particular because it reminds me of a very fascinating paper I read about MRIs. So for MRIs, very, very strong experimental mental MRIs, like eight Tesla MRIs. They reported that patients going to the MRIs started feeling uh, woozy, faint, tingly uh, sensations in their muscles as they moved towards the MRIs. That's because the human body is a conductor. And when the patients moved towards the magnetic field, the magnetic field was so strong that it was inducing currents in the muscles and the blood as it was pumping around the body. That is a crazy strong magnetic field that people couldn't even move towards an MRI without feeling faint. They had trouble walking because electrical signals were firing in their muscles when they didn't want them to fire. Yeah, if you had a magnetic field of that level inside of whatever chamber we constructed, Wolverine would have a pretty hard time just moving around and continuing to exist. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode, I'm giving to Dark Neutrino, who goes through some of their own math to calculate just how much energy we would have to put into our DCEU chamber to make Wolverine have such an induced current in his bones that he would boil to death in flames. And they say it would take hundreds, if not thousands of nuclear reactors worth of power just to make this chamber work. And that is uh, ridiculous and probably infeasible for our method if not a complete and total money suck, and it would take years and years and years to build and be completely uh, irrational to do so. Hey, hey, we're super villains. We can waste billions on a chamber like this, but for going through all that math and saying that we would need nuclear reactors worth of power just to kill Wolverine, you, Dark Neutrino, are indeed a super nerd. Careful. <laughs> now, moving right along, remember that hint I gave you at the beginning? Ones and zeros, kind of like binary. Yeah, that's because this week's episode of Because Science is How Can Captain Marvel Survive Unprotected in Space? That's right, in this week's Because Science, we are going through a fascinating thought experiment because of Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers canonically had her genetics rewritten by aliens called the Creep, And one of her powers that she got from that augmentation was always very fascinating to me. She could just survive in the vacuum of space, but without any radical changes to her body and without wearing a big bulky suit, anything like that. So in this week's episode, we are trying to figure out how you would actually change a humanoid such that it still looked and operated like a humanoid, but could survive in space, one of the most extreme environments that you can imagine. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, all about how to oh, defeat Wolverine with science and leave me all of your best corrections at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget,
it's kind of easy in this day and age to start conflating your self-worth with how you do in the internet realm with social media. I, I want you to remember that you are not your likes, you're not your hearts, you're not your retweets. Uh, what makes you important or special or liked or popular is not how many impressions you get on social media. You do not have to make how you feel and who you are intrinsically tied to some kind of techno democracy that you didn't vote for. You are worth so much more than a couple of retweets. Trust me.